yeah, I kind of want to put together like a, a drain or something like that. But for this class, for today, we are going to be talking about inner strength. And I'm not sure where my book is, so I might have to just do this from memory. So um, in this class, we're going to do a little bit of the same things that we did last week, um, where we were in tree pose and we transitioned from there. We're going to do some of that here as well. And uh, yeah, the concept is just that we're going to be uh, accessing our physical strength, our external strength, but also having that resiliency within so that we can do so. So let's actually start this class um, on our backs. If you end up using props, it'll be some blocks, but you don't need to have them, but do come all the way onto your back and either legs outstretched or take a constructive rest with your feet wide and your knees in toward each other. And you can have your arms alongside your body, or you might choose to place your hands somewhere on your torso. And if it's comfortable for your eyes to close, let the eyelids drop. And as you scan the body from toes to top and top to toes, notice those places within your body where you might actually even feel the concepts or manifestation of strength. There might be places where you just feel solid or vibrant. And also notice that that strength is neutral. It's not virtuous. It's not anything except for what it is. But it is something that we can hone in on so that we can persevere, so that we can be in positions and situations of stress and take that kind of inner locus of control of that acceptance, that inner strength. So if this doesn't really like align with how you're feeling today, then you can pick a different kind of intention. But this is what we're going to be rolling with for now. Soften the muscles of the face, soften the jaw, and start to just notice the breath as well. That soft, ever present breath. And then allow your thoughts to go to your thoughts. Offering yourself permission to simply be here today, offering yourself permission to acknowledge your inner strength. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Sip in a little bit more at the top. And then you're ready to exhale. At least everything that doesn't support that strength. All right. And then if the legs are not outstretched, do outstretch them. Reach the arms up above the head. Good morning. Reach of the fingertips. Maybe find a little bit of like a wobble from side to side. And then we're going to take a reclined crescent. So walk the legs over to the upper right corner of your mat and then your upper arms over to the lower right corner of the mat. Maybe cross the left ankle over right, press through the heel. You could take the right fingers to the left wrist. And depending on how this feels on your body, maybe start to draw the left shoulder and the left ribs down toward the mat. So just finding a little bit of tension here rather than like rolling over onto the right side. And again, this just is how this feels. If it feels okay, then do it. And if it starts to provide um, unwanted tension, then you can drop it. All right, when you're ready, come on over to the other side. Maybe place the right ankle over the left, pressing through the heel, maybe left fingers to right wrist. And again, if it feels okay on the shoulder and on the jaw and all the other parts of your body, start to draw the rest right side of the ribs and the right shoulder down toward the ground. All right, and then come back to center. Gently draw both knees into your chest for winter leaving pose. Maybe a little rock from side to side. All right, and then make your way to um, your, uh, let's see here, what do we do? Hands and knees, <laughs> that's what I said. So however you'd like to get there, get to your hands and knees. And then we're gonna do some hip circles. So just kind of wind your hips in one direction. And then wind them in the other direction. These can be big circles, these can be little circles. My, uh, my hips felt really weird this morning, like there was something going on. And so this kind of movement kind of helped me to get just right back into, into place. <laughs> All right, and then you can continue doing this, or if you, um option two, kind of have a, a 
stretch through the arms. You know, walk from side to side, pointing the fingertips to the side. Maybe, maybe, depending on just your mobility, your fingertips might come back toward the knees. And then take those same kinds of hip circles. Don't ground the heels of the hands down. Well, then rise up because that'll also give you a little stretch into the backs of the arms and hands. So again, just move in the way that feels best for you. Just remember to take circles in both directions. All right, and then waddle the fingertips back, 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 back. They weren't already until the fingers are pointed forward. Tuck your toes and the hips up and back, downward facing dog. So find a little pedal or movement if that works for you. And feel the inner thighs roll back. Spread your fingertips really wide. And then rotate the inner elbows, that kind of soft inner part of the upper arms toward the top of the mat. You'll start to feel the shoulder blades draw away from each other, really strengthening here. Feel the inner thighs roll back, hide the heels behind the toes if that's possible. And kind of tilt the hips toward the sky as you press the chest back toward the thighs. Inhale, bend the knees, look towards the top of your mat, and on your exhale, travel to the top. You can step, you can hop, you can take a lot of steps. I'm going to take a lot of steps. Get to the top of the mat, ragdoll pose, bend through the knees. And then you can do what you like. So maybe taking the elbows and the hands, or maybe you're a chaos class with the neck person or something else. Take the positioning that is good for you. And of course, just take notes if you move or if you stay still. Some very valuable information here. Okay, if you took a grip, switch it out, make it weird. Okay, then release the fingertips down toward the ground. We're going to take three halfway lifts. Inhale, fingertips press to something. Belly button goes up toward the spine as you telescope the neck long. Inner thighs roll back, still exhale fold. And then we'll do this again. Inhale, halfway lift, press the fingertips to the shins. Exhale, take it back. And then a third time. Reach the heart forward, really wave the spine long. Exhale, take it. And then reach your eyes, press to the feet. Sweep the fingertips toward the sky. Lift up on the hips as you lift up the thumbs. And then on the exhale, take the hands to the heart. Hands press together, shoulders down the back. Posture of samasthiti, posture of equality. When you're ready on your inhale, fingertips lift up again. Maybe even send the chin up toward the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Arms can be wide if you are to. Inhale, half with it. Look out. Exhale, hold. And we're simply going to step back to downward facing dog. And then we're going to check our work. Lift to the toes, roll to the top of a plank pose. Just notice if you needed any adjustments in the distance between the heels to the hands. It's not good, it's not bad, it just is. What did you estimate? Okay, inner elbows forward, knees up or down, lower all the way down to the ground. Keep the shoulders up, keep the elbows in toward the ribs, untuck your toes. Inhale, cobra pose. Flare through the toes. We're going to stay here for just a couple breaths. So really draw the ears and the shoulders away from the ears. Press through the, even the pinky toes. And then if you want, you can hover the hands away from the mat. Just notice that if you do that and like your, your chest, your breath might start to move your body a little bit more. All right, the hands are lifted, release them down. Press up the hands and knees, knees a little wider, toes to touch, hips to heels, child's pose. Allow the forehead to rest downward, maybe place the hands to give yourself a pillow, and if this doesn't feel comfortable, then do find another posture. Two more breaths here. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. If you need another vinyasa in there, then you can take one. The practice is yours. If that is where your strength is carrying you, then allow that to be so. Okay, as you're ready, sweep the right leg up toward the ceiling. We're going to stay here for just a moment. Pull the left hip crease back and lift up to the inner right thigh. So you're start, you might find that like the leg doesn't lift as high as if you like, you know, opened up. That's okay. We're going to look for this strengthening version. Left hip back, right inner thigh, up toward the sky. Lift up the left heel so you really get high. And then on your exhale, pull the right knee toward the chest and then foot between the hands toward the right thumb. If you want to use um, blocks here, you certainly can. Drop the left knee down toward the ground, or to the ground, I should say. And then we'll take Anjanasana. Fingertips up, soften through the shoulders. And continue to, with the back toes, either flare through the foot like we did in our cobra pose, or if it's easier, or not, I shouldn't say easier, better for you, tuck the toes and flick the mat away. One is not really easier than the other. 
Um, this is really about like what feels good on your knee. All right, cactus arms, elbows like they touch, lift up on the ribs. So it feels like the space from the armpits to the upper hips got longer. So it's like as elbows go down, you can lift up through the heart, deep breath in. Stay for the exhale. One more breath in, feel the heart become more bright. And then on the exhale, float the hands down to the ground or to your blocks. I'm gonna pull my blocks in here. And we're just gonna just shift the hips back, allow the front leg to be a little bit straighter and shift it forward. So just kind of having that velocity movement. Mm -hmm. And your blocks are mobile. So if they are a little bit too far away, a little too close, you just move. All right, once you've got that right knee bent toward the front again, you're gonna place the left hand beneath the shoulder. Um, it could be on top of the block. Tuck the back toes, lift up the back knee. Right fingertips lift up toward the sky. Low lunge twist. Rotate the ribs. Maybe look up toward the right thumb. And then just be careful to pull the left shoulder head back so it's not creeping toward the ear. All right, when you're ready, release the right hand down to the ground. Step the left foot to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, offer up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, send the hips back. We're going to come to a chair pose. Reach the fingertips high as you draw the, uh, the weight back toward the heels. Just allow the breath to occur. And then on your exhale, press through the feet. Come up all the way to standing. Cactus arms, lift up to the heart. And then place the palms in front of the chest. Back to the uh, posture of equality. Soften on your exhales. Feel the energy beneath the feet. Inhale, fingertips float up. Exhale, forward fold. Ardha Uttanasana, offer the heart, find the pressure with the fingers somewhere. Exhale, fold. Okay, step back to downward facing dog. Let's check our work. Rise to the toes, roll to the top of a plank pose. Feel free to keep the knees lifted or you can drop them. Exhale, shift forward, lower all the way down to the ground. Or if you wanna do an upward dog, you can do that. Inhale, take your back bend, either cobra, or upward facing dog, or maybe you've got locusts or something else. And then come back to downward facing dog in the way you would like. Maybe through hands and knees or folding into and out of child's pose, or you can do a chaturanga. Take a deep breath into the nose and then release it on the breath out. Inhale, left leg lifts up, right hip back. And again, we're gonna chill here. <laughs> chill, you know, it's just like casual, just casual one leg in the air, no big deal. Right hip back, lift up through the inner left thighs. Find some action through the left foot, however you want. All right, lift up the right heel, deep breath, and exhale, pull the left knee toward the chest, and then step the foot through. Use the left hand to help. Drop the right knee when you're ready. On Jayasana, low crescent lunge. Fingers lift up, soften through the shoulders. Flare through the back toes, flick it away. Lift up through the top of the belly, the top of the heart, and then take cactus arms. See if that action of being the elbows down can give you the opposite action, right? Of lifting up and back through the heart, still staying grounded. Another inhale, save your exhale. Inhale, prepare to move, and on your exhale, just float the hands down to the ground or to the blocks. And then finding that shifting back to that half splits and then forward again. And so if you ever do notice like, mm, that, that grounded knee is feeling a little bit um, mobile, <laughs> That could be a bad thing. It could be a thing that can cause harm, is what I mean. And so you might want to place a blanket underneath or double up your mat, the old thing. Or even just change range of motion. All right, once you find yourself with that left knee bent towards the top of the mat, you're going to pop up the back knee, low lunge, sweep the left fingertips toward the sky, low lunge, twist, deep breath in. Exhale, draw the left shoulder back. So it might even feel like your part is leaning back. And then when you're prepared, drop the left hand down to the mat. On an exhale, step the right foot to the top of the mat, forward fold. One time, Ardha Uttanasana. Press through the fingers, feel the inner thighs, roll back. Exhale to fold, plant the crown of the head down. Bend the knees, send the bell back. Utkatasana, much too much. Soften into the shoulders, fierce pose. This is so strengthening in so many ways. Use your inner strength. Don't even worry about what your relationship to this pose might have been in the past. When you're ready, on the exhale, press the feet, lift all the way up. And then cactus arms, lift up through the heart, lift up through the hips, and then bring the palms in front of you. Posture, some CT. Soften through your exhales. 
and feel the energy pressing down to the feet as much as you're rising through the back of the head and through the crown. Take a deep breath into the nose. Release it. Once more if it suits you. And then as you're ready, inhale, take up space, lift up. Exhale, lead with the heart, forward fold, take it down. Inhale, halfway lift, offer out. Exhale, fold, step back to downward facing dog. We're still gonna play our, our pop quiz time. I guess I'm not a pop quiz anymore, I feel like we're aware of it. Lift up the heels, roll to the top of plank pose. How did you do? Did you notice the difference or the distance rather? Inner belly uh, reaches up. And then we're all gonna lower all the way down to the ground. So knees up or knees down. Untuck the toes, lengthen the body back a little bit. Okay, take the hands behind you. You can either have the hands pointing down or palms down toward the ground, or if you'd like, interlace the fingers at the low back. Draw the heels of the hands together if you can. Regardless of the choice you've made, roll the shoulders up and back, and then reach the hands back. So either palms are facing down or you've got your knuckles drawing back, lift up through the chest, and then if and when you're ready, lift up to the thighs. I know, so early in the sequence, and we're right here, finding our inner strength. Vishalambasana, this is locust pose, one of the variations. Lift up through the inner thighs, actually through the toes. And then when you're ready, on and exhale. Release all the way down, create a pillow with the hands, let the heels drop to the side. Maybe find a little wiggle. And we're gonna do this one more time. Draw the chin down, reach the hands back. If you clasp, clasp the other way. So it's gonna be other pinky on the outside. And then do that same thing. Lift up to the knees, lift the hips toward the ribs. Oh my gosh. Lift up at the back of the heart, reach the hands back. If you've got the hands clasped, see if you can keep the hands toward each other. And then if and when you'd like, lift up to the thighs. See if you're uh, jutting your chin up and maybe just lift up to the back of the head instead. How much more length does that afford you? How much more lift? Just breathe. You have strength. You created this. And then on an exhale, surrender back down, pillow with the hands, other way, the other cheek to the mat if you or to your pillow hands if you did that, heels to side. Allow a little bit of release, <sighs> softening. All right, and then when you're ready, hands back alongside the ribs, tuck the toes, lift up on the knees, feel the hips draw toward the ribs, so it feels like kind of corseted it up, and then either press up to hands and knees, downward facing dog, or up to chaturanga, or if you like to do the, uh, the child's pose version, that is warm of faves. So pick the one that best suits your intention, your manifestation of that intention of inner strength or something else. Okay, when you're ready, right leg lifts up toward the sky, left hip crease pulls back, lifts up on the left heel. Exhale, place the right foot between the hands toward the right thumb. All right, we're gonna keep the left knee lifted perhaps. If you wanna drop it, you can. Have the fingertips away from the mat and then lift all the way up. <laughs> Balance, high crescent lunge. Spike up through that back heel. All right. You're going to take cactus arms, elbows like they might touch, maybe soften the right knee down further as you lift up through the heart. Cool. All right. Straighten through the arms, straighten through the right leg, lift up. All right. This time on the exhale, bend through the right knee and then sweep the fingertips away from you. So you're reaching, you're uh, twisting to the right. That was an important cue. <laughs> Inhale, come right back up, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. We're straighter. Exhale, bend to the knees, twist to the right, thumbs toward the sky, maybe look back with the right thumb. Challenge, challenge. Let's do this once more. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale. All right, take it back to that high lunge with the bend to the front knee, and then bring the palms to the heart. We've done this quite a few times. Find that resistance. Lean forward. Inhale, lengthen. And on your exhale, you're going to twist left elbow to the outside of the thigh. If you're like, no, I don't, I'm not interested, take the left hand outside the thigh and just the right hand to the head. Same thing here. If you want, keep the left knee lifted. You might choose to drop it. Lengthen to the crown of the head and start to rotate at the belly. Follow your breath. You got this. Look down to the right side of toes. And then launch off the left foot. You're going to bring the left foot toward the top of the mat. Maybe toes to touch, or perhaps you prefer to have the feet hips with distance, but you're in a revolved chair. Maybe it takes a couple steps. Continue to pull the left hip back to the left knee. Comes back in line with the right. You might be surprised. Maybe send your gaze down. When you're ready on an inhale, back to regular Utkatasana. 
Exhale, press the stand. Hands to heart. Release the muscles down the back, lift up on the hips. The posture of equality. Recognize your own inner strength, your own physical outer strength. And then as you're ready, inhale, take up space, fingertips lift, upward prayer. Exhale, bow down, forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. And then step back to downward facing dog. All right, when you're ready, right to the toes, roll to the top of plank pose, check your work. Vinyasa, if you would like it, or I'll just see a downward facing dog in any vinyasa, any transition. I chose to skip it. <laughs> That's my transition. And then when you're ready, no rush, sweep the left leg toward the sky. Again, we're kind of pull the right hip crease back. So you've got lots of strength, lots of length. Lift up the right heel. Exhale, place the left foot between the hands toward the left thumb. Always feel free to take the blocks underneath your hands if you would like. And then when you're ready, have the fingertips away from the mat. Come all the way up. High crescent lunge. First time on this side. So, you know, try to lift up to that back knee. Spike to the heel. One time, cactus arms. Elbows come down. Allow the heart to lift up. Let that help, right? This kind of opposing motion thing. All right. And then straight through the arms, straight through the left leg. Get tall. Exhale, bend to the front knee, twist to the left. Fingertips reach away, thumbs up. Inhale, take a right back up. Ooh, balance. <laughs> Exhale, second time and twist. And then a third time when you're ready. All right, come back to the high lunge with the front knee bent. When you're ready, hands to the heart. We've done this. Lean forward, feel the left hip crease back. Inhale, inflate. Exhale, yep, 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 twist at the belly. Elbows to the outside or hands. Keep spiking up that back heel and the back knee. Notice what is sustainable. Maybe lean the heart back slightly. Keep yourself safe. And then look down toward the left toes. All right, if they're not already there. And then one step or several. You're gonna step the right foot all the way to the top so you're in a revolved chair. And it's up to you whether you want your feet to be separate or the toes together. If the toes are together, also squeeze the knees toward each other. And then all the same goodness. Pull the right knee back so it's in line with the left. Rotate the ribs. And you can always be upright, remember? And then when you're ready, unravel back to the chair pose. Inhale. Exhale, press to the feet. Come all the way to standing. Draw the hands to the heart. Posture of equality. Maybe you can feel the heart beating into the thumbs. If it's comfortable, so let the eyes close. Allow the eyelids to drop close. Return to your intention. If it was inner strength, notice that consider that um, experience maybe of feeling some kind of less measurable energy going through the body. Very likely you don't have any, you know, biofeedback devices on you. If you do, also want to hear about it. But most likely, you're simply listening. So allow yourself to listen to that strength. Take another strengthening breath in through the nose. And release it. Let go of the strength. And do that once more if it suits you. In your time, on an inhale, reach the fingertips up, upward prayer. Exhale, forward fold, take it all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, off of the heart. And then exhale to fold, step back to downward facing dog. Also notice what foot you tend to uh, step forward with. Rise to the toes, roll to the top of the plank pose. Check your work. Vinyasa, if you would like, I'll see you in downward facing dog. Allow yourself at least two full rounds of breath here. And then take knees to mat, toes to touch, hips to heels, child's pose. Child's pose doesn't feel particularly restful when 
find another posture that does. The point right now is to experience freely and experience your inner strength through quiet and through softness and through a posture that I'm hoping feels um, easeful for you. And if it doesn't, then I invite you to find those changes to allow this to feel useful. Again, it might be on your knees. It might be actually sitting in some other completely di uh, different way. And return back to that experience of the breath. And the experience of finding the ease, the softening through your face. Recollect that your breath and your body interact all the time. All right, when you're ready, reach the arms out long. If you're in your child's pose and then make your way back to downward facing dog in your own time, if you need a little bit more time, take it. All right, bend to the knees, look towards the top of your mat. On your exhale, step, hop, float, make your way all the way to the top. One time, halfway lift, reach the heart forward, press the feet down and away from each other. Exhale to fold. Bend through the knees, sit the booty back, chair pose, much too much, Utkatasana. Find your inner strength. Your inner strength might even involve, hey, I'm gonna straighten my legs and re-enter this posture, I'm not afraid. And then when you're ready, on the next exhale, press the feet from all the way up. And then exhale, hands to your heart. We're gonna take tree pose, Rikshasana. So separate the feet out just a little bit. And you're gonna shift the weight over onto left foot. Take the right knee out. Just give yourself all the stability. Take the right knee out to the side. Hips lift, and then maybe stay here. Maybe find a wall. Um, we've already done some balancing, so maybe you know, maybe this is good. Maybe you're starting to get fatigued. And then take your tree pose wherever you'd like. Give the foot up the leg. Feel free to use the hand. All right, inner strength. <laughs> you're pressing down through the left foot. You're drawing the right foot in toward the left leg. Let the tailbone just, it's kind of feeling like it's reaching for the back of the heel. All that's doing is drawing the hips up so you can draw that strength through the heart. If you want to extend the arms, take a different kind of variation. Lift up through the heart without moving into a back bend, unless that is your intention. If you want to take a back bend here, make it so. But think about exactly what you're doing. All right. We are going to change it up and have so much fun here in this transition. If the arms are extended, maybe take them down to the hips or to the heart, just for a moment. Oh, I actually changed my mind. Take your hands to your hips for sure. <laughs> take the right knee toward the front of the room. We're gonna move into a half moon pose from here. So bend to the standing knee just a bit. Okay, find that buoyancy, requires your strength, flow in your arms. <laughs> Reach your left arm out in front of you out at an angle, let that right hand to the right hip kind of guide it back and open, start to open up toward the right. Maybe the hands come down to the right hand comes down to a block. Maybe you lift the left fingertips up. Half moon pose. Follow your breath. Rotate the ribs. Left to right. Just breathe. Inner strength. Outer strength. What matters most is the way that you approach, the way that you come out. Just two more breaths here. And then release the lifted leg next to the other. Ragdoll pose, top of the mat. Maybe take a sway. Plenty of time here in your ragdoll. The way of honoring strength, one of the ways of honoring your strength. Okay, if you took a grip, switch it out. Same but different. And then release the fingertips if you took that grip. One time halfway with reach the heart forward. Exhale forward. All right, send the bum back. Utkatasana, chair pose, lift up through the arms. Feel the hips rise up toward the ribs here. 
So again, it kind of takes out like that ultra low back um, arching. Just like, it's fine to have an arch, right? Like it's your spine. <laughs> but just we're looking to not fully, fully over accentuate it. All right, when you're ready, on the exhale, come up all the way to standing. And then draw the hands to the heart. Okay, let's take that Vrikshasana again. Shift the weight over to the right leg. Bend the left knee out. Take the left knee out to the side. Lift up on the hips and then take your version. Foot in or not. Maybe higher in the leg. Maybe use your hand. And again, strength toward your center. Drawing the thigh and the foot toward each other. Grounding down with the right leg. Noticing all those little fluctuations that are keeping you up. And then when you're ready, if you want, take a different variation. Get the palms to the gaze. You need to notice the breath. Steadiness and ease. All right. There's no rush, but when you're ready, take your hands back to the hips. A nice little starting point. All right. From here, you're going to keep the left hand to the left hip. Draw the knee forward. Bend to the standing knee. Reach the right arm out. And then start to extend that lifted leg back, half moon pose, Arna Chandrasana. The right fingertips might come down to a block, they might come to the ground, they might float. And then if and when you'd like, you can lift the right fingertips up. Continue to rotate the ribs toward the sky. Have that same idea that the hips draw toward the ribs, extend out and rotate. Inner strength, outer strength. Follow your breath. All you have to do here is breathe in this totally normal position. All right, when you're ready, bend that same leg, drop the top one, ragdoll pose, let it go, totally let it go. And again, just notice, do you sway, do you stay still? Maybe you're doing something slightly different, maybe you just learned something about yourself. And then switch out the grip of the of your hands, your elbows, whatever you did, if you did. And then release the fingertips down to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, reach the heart up. And exhale to fold. Let's do that just once more. Inhale, halfway lift. Find resistance. And then exhale. And then root to rise, sweep the fingertips toward the sky, come up all the way to standing. And then on the exhale, take the hands to the heart. Roll the shoulders down and back, lift up through the hips. Feel free to close the eyes if that feels all right. Return to the physical sensation. Return to that connection of your breath to your body. Return your attention to your own inner strength. You might have also noticed some of your outer strength and notice what it took to get you here. Thousands of decisions, thousands of interactions, thousands of things that just seem to happen. And throughout all of that, maintaining and cultivating, increasing your own inner strength. When you're ready, just sigh it out. And then maybe once more. On an inhale, fingertips drift up skyward. And then exhale, forward fold, take it all the way down. Halfway lift, in. Exhale to fold. Take a vinyasa if you would like it. Maybe take it the regular way rather than down dog to float to top of plank. Move as you would like. And then when you're ready, take the knees to the mat, toes to touch, hips to heels. Allow yourself to come to child's pose. Mm -hmm. 
We'll rest here for four more breaths. You ready? Start to walk the hands closer in towards you and then begin to press yourself up to sit on the heels just for a moment. We're going to play with crow pose <laughs> because this is about inner strength. Um, and we haven't done crow pose in like, it feels like forever. So let's, let's do this. It is hot. It's pizza season. Let's, let's like, let's match it. Let's do it. So if you've got your blocks, cool. If you have just one, cool. If you got two, you can give yourself like a really big platform by placing the blocks next to each other. If you don't have two blocks, you use one. If you don't have blocks or you don't care about them, you don't use them. But if you want to use your blocks, we've been doing all kinds of things in this class that are helping prepare us for this moment. We've been drawing the knee into the chest, lifting up to the belly. We've been working on balance. We even stretched out through our arms earlier, whether you realize it or not. We had leg extension. We did all kinds of things. So it's going to be great. Um, even a chair, hopefully not so much that you're like, you know, all kinds of wobbly. If you are, that's fine. We don't really focus on the outer strength so much. This is really about what's happening inside. So if you want to use your block, you're going to step on top of it, perch like your little crow. And again, you might have two blocks. If you don't have very small feet, it might be more comfortable for you. Hands out in front of you. So remember that kind of reach that we did when we were doing our half moon pose? You want that same kind of extension out. Inner elbows roll forward. Lift up the hips. Lift up the toes. We did a lot of this. Okay, so this is like, I prefer personally to take my knees to the backs of my arms. A lot of people prefer to squeeze in. If you're an in squeezer, that works. I prefer the balancing aspect of it and the squeezing in of knee to back of arm. Maybe it's because I have narrow shoulders. I'm not sure. But... These are both options for you. Lift up the hips, roll forward. If you get to the place where you're like, what I am doing is I got my fingertips to the ground and I'm just kind of rocking forward and feeling that muscle activity, rad. That is your crow pose. If you want, you can soften the hands all the way down, suction to the ground, lift the knees up toward the armpits, shift forward. Okay, reach the heart forward, elbows back. Maybe lift up one toes, other toes, maybe both toes, toes together. Yes. Continue to reach the heart forward. Yeah. yeah, 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 You've done all this good work. Think about how your chest was when we were taking all those chair poses, right? You're lifting out and up. And when you're ready, come back down. Do a little shake, shake. Go through the neck. Whew. All right, let's do a quick debrief. <clears throat> How are people feeling? <laughs> Bro, is always challenging for me. <laughs> always challenging. I like start to feel it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot. It's really a lot. Are you using a block, Prima, or no? No, I still haven't gotten blocks. <laughs> I need but... to send you a link. Just like, here's a discount. Do it. Um, <laughs> and you don't need the block. The block, though, it just, you know, like, it takes away four inches of effort. Yeah, I should. No. I should yeah. I, I've been meaning to get blocks. You can send me a link. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a link. That could be helpful. Kiki, Dan, how's that for you? I got a thumbs up from Dan. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's hard. I could get to crow but then it's hard to like go that extra inch to really have the center balance mm -hmm. yeah. there fall back think about when what you're doing when you go from like a, a three-legged dog right and you're bringing the leg in and you've got your hips as high as you can go and you're like really spiked up to the other heel it's like really kind of similar mechanics there mm. so see if it's like like just kind of like muscle memory back to I'm drawing my right foot forward, but instead you've just got the, the knee in toward the arm, whether you're doing the squeeze out or the pushing. Kiki, how are you? Um, 
good crow is usually really hard on my wrists mm -hmm. um i semi like i started to overbalance forward which does not usually happen to, like i usually am more backward so i was yeah must have been like going for it more or something yeah 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 <laughs> you didn't know your own strength <laughs> so yeah but it's always fun to try it so yeah yeah and like i the the wrist thing sometimes it's it's like a totally different variation but it's fun to just be on the fingertips and yes. see how i mean like how far you can go right like knees up the arms shifting forward without like planting the hands because it just kind of keeps all this really really yeah. engaged i've never been able to like literally do it <laughs> i'm yeah. assuming it's possible i don't know but <laughs> i like the intent of it at least yeah <laughs> it's a fun one all right let's let's get on back let's um let's come back actually just to um hands and knees actually not to hands and knees i'm sorry to seated on your knees or seated on your hips and supasana let's just actually work through our wrists so let's first extend the right arm out point the fingertips up and just draw the fingertips kind of softly toward the right shoulder but drop the right shoulder away from the ear And then release it, pull the fingertips down toward the armpit, but definitely again, roll that right shoulder away. Let go, left fingertips, you're gonna pull toward the top of your shoulder. And then pulling it down. Notice if that tension for me just like went straight to my jaw. All right, let it go, do some abracadabra with the wrists in one direction, then the other. And then interlace your fingers behind your back. If that doesn't quite feel right, just take your hands to the hips. And then you're going to draw that fist that you just created with your fingertips over to the right shoulder, right hip, and then drop the right ear toward the right shoulder. And then maybe start to draw some gentle arcs from the chin all the way down toward the center of the chest and back over to the right again. All right, take the chin up. Interlace the fingers if you did that. Interlace the other way. If you didn't, you can just keep your hands to the hips. And then start to draw the fist that you just made over to the left hip. Drop the left ear toward the left shoulder. And stay here or start to draw those arcs with the chin down toward the side of the chest and the neck. Unravel. Move through the fingertips again, maybe some of that abracadabra motion. And then come on to your back. Draw the knees in toward the chest for wind relieving pose. So just drawing the knees in. And then take the toes together, knees a little bit wider. So, first of all, this is a little bit like our um, child's pose. And then place your elbows toward the knees, maybe draw the knees all the way up the armpits. Pull the fingertips back toward the shoulders. You're in crow pose again. And if you're really, really pulling the knees up and the arms into legs, you might start to have some of that quivering. Crow pose once again. And then release. Come back to that wind relieving pose. Soften the hands to the shins or the thighs. Allow the breath to become soft once again. And then pull the knee and extend the left leg out long. Drop it to the ground. And let's take a supine twist. Draw the right knee over to the left. Maybe swing the gaze to the right and let the eyelids drop close if that's okay. And then when you're ready, come onto the back, let the right leg go out long, pull the left knee in toward the chest, and then switch it up, left knee to the right, supine twist.
And on the exhale, come back to center. You need to give yourself one more squeeze, wrapping the arms toward the shins, and drawing the forehead toward the knees. And then when you're ready, soften into the final posture of this class, which is Shavasana. If you need other postures, if you need other adjustments and environments, you'd be using the eye mask. Make no sense. Allow yourself to come to a place where you can find rest. If you started this sequence with the knees together and feet out wide, maybe you come back to that same posture. And then begin to release your efforts even more. Experiencing the softening of the skin. Still noticing the residual effects of your inner and outer strength of the body as you soften. Return to that more natural pace of breath. Allow yourself to simply be. Slowly deepen your breath. Allow anything you're experiencing to surface with neutrality. I'm ready, roll to the sides, pause. And then when you're ready, come to a seat of your choice for a brief reflection. Press the palms together, thumbs at the heart, Anjali Mudra. 
I'm going to sing the sound of OM one time. If you'd like to join in, please sing with me. Thank you for listening. You can listen. But first, we'll take a strengthening inhale. And then we'll release it. Breathe in to chant. And inhale, sweep the arms out and the palms to press above you. And on the exhale, your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought. Down to your lips for clarity of speech. And then your heart for clarity of action. By your head to your heart to your inner strength in honor and in humility and gratitude for this strength. For recognizing this within others, helping us along each other's journeys. It is all one and the same. Helping us find more peace within and also between. Thank you so much for sharing part of your morning and part of your practice with me. I am so grateful for you. And I cannot wait to see you do the practice out in the world. So I send you back in the name of Christ. Welcome back, Yogis. Namaste.